Good afternoon, Bettendorf Middle Schoolers. I'm back again to do another book talk from our ebook database, Mac and Via. The book that I'm going to share with you today is actually one that I am planning to read myself. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about it. I've just not had the time to read it. So I thought I'm going to go ahead and book talk it with you today and hope that some of you will join me in reading it. I'm going to go ahead and go into present mode and get our slides going here. Okay, today is Monday, April 27th. Um, I hope everybody is doing well as the school shutdown continues. The book that I'm sharing today is a World War II historical fiction. It's by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley, and it's called The War That Saved My Life. The main character is a 10-year-old girl named Ada, and she lives in London during World War II. Ada is not treated very well by her mother, and much of this is due to the fact that Ada has something called a club foot. It is a condition that she was born with that causes one of her feet to turn at a pretty sharp angle, making it difficult for her to walk. And because of this, Ada's mother does not let her out of the apartment. They live in a very tiny apartment in London. And Ada's mother is embarrassed by her condition. So she doesn't allow Ada out of the house. In fact, Ada is not treated very well by her mother. In addition to not letting her leave the apartment, she treats her pretty much like a servant. And when she feels that Ada has done something wrong, she will make her get into the cabinet underneath the kitchen sink. And it's there that Ada is kept in, um, and she also encounters things under there like cockroaches. Um, Ada is also physically abused by her mother, beaten. Now, for those of you not totally aware of um, the history of London during World War II, they were the targets of a lot of bombings. And back during this time, parents who were worried about their children would take drastic measures to make sure that they were safe from the bombings um, that were conducted by the Germans. So it was not uncommon for parents to have their children sent to the countryside to live with people who were willing to take them in and keep them safe. Um, and then hopefully these children were then reunited with their parents at the end of the war. And Ada's mother wants to send her younger brother Jamie to the countryside to keep him safe. And Ada sees this as an opportunity to get away from her abusive mother. So she leaves without telling her mother um, to accompany her brother to the countryside. And it is there that they um, are taken in by a woman named Susan. And it's there that Ada discovers that um, just because she has a club foot, it doesn't make her any less capable or intelligent than anybody else. And Ada finds a modicum of happiness there. She learns to ride a horse. She learns to read and write. And again, she discovers that she is worth more than her mother has let her believe. Eventually, when it's safe for children to come back, Ada's mother wants um, both Ada and Jamie to return to them, but Ada doesn't want to go back. And so if you want to find out if she does have to go back or um, manages to stay with Susan where it's safe, um, you can read The War That Saved My Life. And I didn't have a, a great video to play in the background for this, um, so I'm just going to leave this screen up while I read chapter one to you. Um, the book that I'm book talking again is The War That Saved My Life, and that is available in Mac and Via. Um, there is a sequel to the book called The War I Finally Won, and that one, unfortunately, I do not believe is in Mac and Via. But if it were something that you could read later when libraries open up, I would certainly encourage you to do that. So here's chapter one. Ada, get back from that window, ma'am's voice shouting. 
Ma'am's arm grabbing mine, yanking me so I toppled off my chair and fell hard to the floor. I was only saying hello to Stephen White. I knew better than to talk back, but sometimes my mouth was faster than my brain. I'd become a fighter that summer. Ma'am smacked me, hard. <clears throat> my head snapped back against the chair leg, and for a moment I saw stars. Don't you be talking to nobody, Ma'am said. I let you look out that window out of the kindness of my heart, but I'll board it over if you go sticking your nose out, much less talking to anyone. Jamie's out there, I mumbled. And why shouldn't he be, Ma'am said. He ain't a cripple, not like you. I clamped my lips over what I might have said next and shook my head to clear it. Then I saw the smear of blood on the floor. <clears throat> oh, mercy. I hadn't cleaned it all up from this afternoon. If Ma'am saw it, she'd put two and two together, fast. Then I'd be in the soup for sure. I slid over until my bottom covered the blood stain, and I curled my bad foot underneath me. You'd better be making my tea, Ma'am said. She sat on the edge of the bed and peeled off her stockings, wiggling her two good feet near my face. I'm off to work in a bit. Yes, Ma'am. I pushed my window chair sideways to hide the blood. I crawled across the floor, keeping my scabbed over bad foot out of ma'am's line of sight. I pulled myself onto our second chair, lit the gas ring, and put the kettle on. Cut me some bread and dripping, ma'am said. Get some for your brother, too. She laughed. And if there's any left, you can throw it out the window. See if Stephen White would like your dinner. How'd you like that? I didn't say anything. I cut two thick slices off the bread and shoved the rest behind the sink. Jamie wouldn't come home until after ma'am left anyhow, and he'd always share whatever food there was with me. When the tea was ready, ma'am came to get her mug. I see that look in your eyes, my girl, she said. Don't start thinking you can cross me. You're lucky I put up with you as it is. You've no idea how much worse things can be. I had poured myself a mug of tea, too. I took a deep swallow and felt the hot liquid scald a trail clear down to my gut. Ma'am wasn't kidding, but then neither was I. There are all kinds of wars. The story I'm telling starts out four years ago, at the beginning of the summer of 1939. England stood on the edge of another great war then. The war we're in the middle of now. Most people were afraid. I was 10 years old, though I didn't know my age at the time. And while I'd heard of Hitler, little bits and pieces and swear words that floated from the lane to my third floor window, I wasn't the least concerned about him or any other war fought between nations. You'd think from what I've already told you that I was at war with my mother, but my first war, the one I waged that June, was between my brother and me. Jamie had a mop of dirt brown hair, the eyes of an angel, and the soul of an imp. Ma'am said he was six years old and would have to start school in the fall. Unlike me, he had strong legs and two sound feet on the ends of them. He used them to run away from me. I dreaded being alone. Our flat was one room on the third floor above the pub where Ma'am worked nights. In the mornings, Ma'am slept late and it was my job to get Jamie something to eat and keep him quiet until she was ready to wake up. Then ma'am usually went out to shop or talk to women in the lane. Sometimes she took Jamie with her, but mostly not. In the evenings, ma'am went to work, and I fed Jamie tea and sang to him and put him to sleep, and I'd been doing all that for as long as I could remember, from the days when Jamie still wore diapers and was too small to use the pot. We played games and sang songs and watched the world out the window. The ice man and his cart, the rag and bone man and his shaggy pony, the men coming home from the docks in the evenings, and the women hanging out wash and talking on the stoops. The children of the lane skipping rope and playing tag. I could have gotten down the stairs even then. I could have crawled or scooted on my bottom. I wasn't helpless, but the one time I did venture outdoors. Ma'am found out and beat me until my shoulders bled. 
You're not but a disgrace, she screamed. A monster with that ugly foot. You think I want the world seeing my shame? She threatened to board over my window if I went downstairs again. That was always her threat to me. My right foot was small and twisted so that the bottom pointed skyward, all the toes in the air, and what should have been the top touched the ground. The ankle didn't work right, of course, and it hurt whenever I put weight on it. So for most of my life, I never did. I was good at crawling. I didn't protest staying in one room so long as it held both Jamie and me. But as Jamie grew older, he wanted to be with the other children playing in the street. Why shouldn't he, ma'am said. He's normal enough. To Jamie, she said, you're not like Ada. You can go wherever you like. He can't, I said. He has to stay where I can see him. At first he did, but then he made friends with a gang of boys and went running out of sight all day. He came home with stories about the docks on the river where big ships unloaded cargo from around the world. He told me about trains and warehouses bigger than our whole block of flats. He'd seen St. Mary's, the church by whose bells I marked time. As the summer days grew longer, he stayed out later and later until he came home hours after ma'am left. He was gone all the time and ma'am didn't care. My room was a prison. I could hardly bear the heat and the quiet and the emptiness. I tried everything to make Jamie stay. I barred the door so he couldn't get out, but he was already stronger than me. I begged and pleaded with ma'am. I threatened Jamie, and then one hot day, I tied his hands and feet while he was sleeping. I would make him stay with me. Jamie woke up. He didn't scream or shout. He thrashed once, and then he lay helpless looking at me. Tears slid down his cheeks. I untied him as quickly as I could. I felt like a monster. He had a red mark on his wrist from where I'd pulled the string too tight. I won't do it again, I said. I promise. I'll never do that again. Still, his tears flowed. I understood. In all my life, I'd never hurt Jamie. I'd never hit him. Not once. And now, I'd become like ma'am. I'll stay inside, he whispered. No, I said, no, you don't need to, but have some tea before you leave. I gave him a mug and a piece of bread and dripping. It was just the two of us that morning. Ma'am gone, I don't know where. I patted Jamie's head and kissed the top of it and sang him a song and did all I could to make him smile. Pretty soon you'll be going to school anyhow, I said, astonished that I hadn't fully realized this before. You'll be gone all day then, but I'll be okay. I'm going to fix things, so I'll be okay. I coaxed him into going out to play, and I waved to him from the window. Then I did what I should have done to start with. I taught myself to walk. If I could walk, maybe ma'am wouldn't be so ashamed of me. Maybe we could disguise my crippled foot. Maybe I could leave the room and stay with Jamie, or at least go to him if he needed me. That's what happened, though not the way I thought it would. In the end, it was the combination of the two, the end of my little war against Jamie and the start of the big war, Hitler's war, that set me free. And that's chapter one. If you haven't watched my videos before, um, if you go to the library symbol, one of the tiles has a link to um, my virtual book talks that I've been doing during the school shutdown. Uh, the link or the tile next to that is the Mac and Via login. And just a reminder, it is your six digit username and your six digit computer password without the BCS. Once logged into Mac and Via, click groups along the left hand side. And the first list that comes up is Mrs. Temperley's virtual book talks. And again, if you have not watched any of my um, virtual book talks, there is a Mac and Via app that is iOS and Android friendly. Um, it's a free download, and you just need to put in your six digit username and your six digit password without the BCS to use the app. Again, I hope everybody is doing well, and I hope that you do find some time to read. Um, keep your reading skills sharp, and Hopefully, uh, get a chance to see you guys again real soon.
Thanks for watching.